so in this video I will talk about the performance or the power angle curve for a round rotor synchronous machine or alternator so in the last lecture we derived the approximate equivalence circuit so again taking into consideration the same equ approximate equivalence circuit so this power angle e curve which I'm going to say here is based on the approximate equivalent circuit and what I'm going to assume here is that some of the assumption is that the power factor is cos phi here and this power factor can be both leading and lagging and the power factor is between the angle between the phi is the angle between the IA which is the current for pay current in current in phase A and VT that is a phase voltage or VA is a phase voltage for A at the terminals so now the biggest thing here is that when you are considering the approximate equivalent circuit you can consider it to be having a EG voltage which is a generated voltage and this voltage will have to go through a drop which is due to the armature reaction which you can show by XAR XAR is for armature reaction and then you can apply what is known as the RA there is the armature resistance and XL which is a leakage reactance or which for the phase A you can write it as XA and what you will get out here is the terminal voltage VT and this voltage here is the ER voltage or the EA voltage which is generated you can term that th this way so this is the first step and what I am telling here is this is my approximate equivalent circuit and the current is a IA and this is VA circuit for a round rotor machine it is of course a synchronous machine so the second thing is based on this what I can say is that my EG is equal to IA into ZS where my it is can be written as IA into RA plus XS where my XS is equal to XAR plus XA which is equal to my synchronous 
reactance so this is a second step and now after the second step the third assumption here is that my RA is very less than my excess I am considered if I will consider this then I can simplify it as IA into excess if I am considering for a round rotor machine in this case where my resistance of the armature is very less than what is my leakage reactance plus the armature reactance which is synchronous reactance so based on this I will draw the vector diagram which is the second phase so the, the next step so what I have got here is I have got the equation and the equivalent circuit the equation like EG is equal to IA into excess so based on this I can draw the equivalent circuit where VA is my voltage for the phase and IA is the current and phi is the power factor or cos phi is my power factor so now the next step is to to if I am drawing a vertical from here the vertical from I can be to show what is my IA into excess so my VT which is or VA can be given as EG minus of J IA into excess so when I'm considering that what I will get here this is my VA or uh, this is what is my generated voltage EG so my EG is equal to VA plus J into IA excess and the angle which the EG which is a voltage generated makes with the voltage is available at the terminals per phase is known as a delta and this delta is what is known as my power angle and this specific case where is for a lagging power factor so as you can see phi is lagging so this is for a lagging power factor the same diagram is drawn for a leading power factor then it could be shown as this way where this is my VA again and my IA could be leading here with the angle of phi and now if you are extending this and if you are drawing a vertical so the vertical could be drawn this way and whatever is this this is my IA excess again so this gives me my EG and this is my Delta so this is for a leading power factor so deriving the power angle equation so the next step is to derive the power angle equation so based on this graph it is possible to say that my IA excess 
cos phi because this angle if you take it it will be phi and again this is delta so this is equal to eg sine delta which is equal to my my eg is equal to ia excess cos phi divided by sine delta so again my power of the circuit p is equal to v into i a or v a into i a can be given as v a i a cos phi will be given as v a i a cos phi this is a power output per phase so considering the phase voltages and the phase current so v a is a phase voltage and IA is a phase current so now the power output PA can be given as you can substitute the IA cos phi here so VA is equal to EG into sine delta divided by excess if you're considering this as a constant k then and if all this is const constant then you can say that p is directly proportional to sine delta or p is equal to k delta so p is a function of k and k is given as this and k is a can be varied to increase or reduce the power but the power will be depending on my delta so from this it is possible to see that your delta will depend on your IA what is your current if this is increasing then the delta will increase again if your reactance is synchronous reactance is increasing your delta will increase so your power will increase so that's some of the things which you can make out from the simple graph and if I am rubbing this and if I'm simply saying that my power output is equal to k sine delta where k is equal to eg va divided by excess in this case and if I'm drawing a graph so if I'm drawing a simple graph where my delta is varying in this direction and my power is varying in this direction and this is my x minus x and y minus x plane then it is seen that for sine is equal to 0 or delta is equal to 0 my power is equal to 0 and for delta is equal to 90 degree my power is equal to 1 or k into 1 which is a maximum value so if I say that this is my k then my maximum of will be obtained at at a value k which is obtained at delta is equal to 90 degree and a similar way a minimum will be obtained at minus k which is equal to delta is equal to minus 90 and a similar way at 180 degree you will obtain 0 and minus 180 degree so whatever is a graph of power to delta is a sinusoidal graph and for this is for delta is greater than 0 and this is for delta is less than 0 so here you can see that the power output is positive and here you can see that the power output is negative so so it is essentially means that here the power is coming into the machine so this is known as a motoring mode or motoring action while 
the here the power is going out of the machine as power output is equal to positive so this is known as the generating mode or generating action of the machine and this is a power angle curve of a round rotor machine 